Well, we're, we're going to change from doing uh, tunes for grade four junior, the simpler type of tunes, uh, to a tune that I'm continually being asked for, or asked uh, for some guidance on. And it's McCrimmon's Sweetheart. Now, I think this is most, uh, this is one of the most deceiving tunes. Uh, on paper, it, it seems to be a very easy tune, or a, perhaps you would say a simple tune. But in reality, it's quite a difficult tune to play. The important thing in McCrimmon's Sweetheart are, is that the C's control the tune. And uh, you have to be very careful to give the C's their, their enough value in the tune. Uh, generally, what I hear played is de and da and da e and do, where the C is really the note that's emphasised all the way through the tune. So I think probably the best thing for me to do would to, to be, would be to play the ground over to you. Now you notice that there are, there are no short C's at all. Now it's the same in the thumb variation. Uh, I'm just going to take a little off the, the theme notes and substitute the high A for the F, but I'm still going to, to stress the C's as I did in the ground. I'll play it over to you.
again, no do short seats. Now, when this next variation, uh, I th think in this tune I call it a very dangerous uh, variation because uh, if you don't control the season here, you finish up playing something like a, a little song or a, a ditty. See? So be very careful in this variation. Now there's one change that I'm going to do in here, and I'm going to substitute the grip that's in the second last bar, and I'm going to play it on the last bar. You'll see in the Paper of Society notes there's a one above the C, so I'm going to play the grip on C uh, in the last bar instead of in the second last bar. Now that's the way I was taught to play it. And it's written in other books out there. Now, you notice that when I came to the end of the, the variation there, I, I just slowed that down a small bit to indicate that this was the end of the variation before going into variation three. Uh, that's just good technique in Pibro, is to just soften the, the ending here rather than cutting everything and measuring it. Now, in variation three, th this is cut quite sharply down, but you have to watch this here. Por into a shumpy. Now that's all played even. Por into a shove. Shil yabra. Now make something of the cadence. Uh, unlike cadences in some other tunes. The cadence is quite an important part of the variation in this tune, and in your tripling variations too. Basically what we're doing is playing the E that's in the cadence here, we're really playing that as a black theme note. And uh, in the early books, that would be shown in that manner. Uh, around about 1900, uh, they started uh, abbreviating a lot of the music and introduced this three-note cadence like this here. And uh, it distorts the understanding of the music because it takes the music, uh, this note, this E, out of the value of the bar. It gives it no value on paper and people tend to play that. But we're going to play that as if this intermediate note in the three note cadence was actually a melody note. So I'll play this over to you uh, again to let you hear it.
Now, in the Dublin Federation in your Paper on Society book, it's written in two four time, which is incorrect. It's, it's really a four four phrase. So, instead of playing it in, uh, as it's written in the book here, uh, you, you should try and bring out the first and the fourth pulse of the, the phrase uh, a little bit. Just finish the variation like that, rather than uh, just diving into the, the tripling variation. Now the variation, the tripling or total variation, f follows very much variation three. Again, show your cadences, make something of the cadence in the tune. So I'll play the tripling. I continued just on to the doubling to let you see the variation in the tempo, the balance of the tempos. But you, you notice again in the doubling of the variation, I played in a 4-4 four, four, uh, scansion, rather than the 2-4 that's in your book. Now, in the false guilt of Kroonle, uh variation, again the cadence is just the same treatment. Uh, in here, try and don't overcut the, the false guilt of Kroonle, uh, that you don't hear the intermediate note.
Now, you notice that in the society book it has a crown law mark. Well, I would advise you not to play that. My teachers never taught or played this, and they were never taught this. It's really, a, it's not a crown law mark, it's really just an open version of the false guilty crown law. And it, it states in, in some of your books, I think in the Kilbury book, that you should play one or the other, but both should be played in the same tune. So I would advise you uh, not to be influenced uh, by what's written here or uh, to play a crunel mark in this tune. Now it's a very nice tune, but it's not an easy tune to control. So that uh, should help you with McCrimmon's sweetheart. Thank you.